Hey guys, start of a BFE job. This is one of those videos, I'll tell you straight, it's going to be a bit longer if it works out because I'm going to try and show you everything, right? You've got to watch these clips. You push them to release them, but sometimes, you know, they get a bit old. So you push them in like that. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to try and get it done a bit quicker. I'm going to include all the basics, like how to, this video could end up being how to release the clips and how to get the clips out and we'll probably need to include how to put them back in to hang around see that plastic cracking that's the sign of one that it doesn't want to play right so when they do get old and brittle this is a 2011 so nine years old uh, all you can do to release them is press that damn middle button in and they usually work pretty good look see like that and then just get under and it should lift out but sometimes they don't all right so just be aware we've got spares so if you've got them missing or whatever we usually replace them sort of two or three bucks each. There's one that's already broken a bit, but anyway, whatever. If it still works, it still works, right? Hay fever city today, so it's gonna be really <coughs> and whatever, oh, whatever, allergy suit. I'll just call it allergy, because I'm not gonna say it's hay or whatever, because I don't know what it is, but dust. I can tell you, I can smell the dust when it's in my nose. I can Mallet, it. it's in the air. A few clips missing over this side. One was already pre-released. We'll get that out. If you get one that's a bit hard, sometimes you just skip it. You go, you know, it's a bit like a uh, pass and you come back to it, right? So we've got our last one to go now. It's already pressed in. Didn't want to come out before. Skipped it, came back to it. I don't know, we've got one more to go in the middle there. Looked a bit dodgy, it was up a little bit. Now just quickly, if you want to know how to reset these, We'll do a quick demonstration. So you've got the middle bit pressed in. Let me see where I am. Oh, there you are there. Okay, right. So the middle part's pressed in. There's hard steel under there, so you can just go holding the outside of it and press the middle against the solid surface and that pops out like that, right? And then and that'll just pop back in the hole. And then you only press those down until they're flush. If you go past flush, it's going to be released again. That's how you lose them, right? Once you've got all those clips off, that'll just lift off out of the way. And that'll expose all your mess, part of the BFE mess that we've got to uh, clean up. So, what are we gonna do next? I haven't dropped the coolant yet, I should have done that first. So, to do that, we're just gonna release any pressure. I'm gonna get scared in a minute, because it's gonna go psh. So, expect that. This vehicle has been driven today, there's gonna be a little bit of pressure in the system. So release, always I give you a tip, so, there you go. I'll give you the safety tip though, right? If you're ever releasing a cooling system when it's hot, <coughs> don't do it, don't do it. These are okay, the Toyota's pretty good. But if you've ever got to open a cap and it's hot, what you should always do is release it very slowly. Keep your hand pressure to hold the cap down because it wants to push up. This one, see, it's already gone, psh. it can't come up because it's on a thread, right? I'm talking more of the older cooling systems, but either way, right? Depending what system you got. See, if you if you let it go, it's just gonna go psh, and you're gonna get showered in coolant. So what you do is you keep the pressure on it, turning it, and while keeping, then you you let you aim it away from you like that, right? And you should have a rag or gloves so you don't get burnt. But if you aim it away from you, you're not gonna get burnt, guys. If you lift it straight up, it's gonna go 360 degree mess, right? Aim it on an angle like that, but it's not gonna happen with these anyway. But I'm gonna caution you. It could happen, right? So these ones, you release them, they get to a point, psh, pretty safe. I'm just gonna go pop that cap on the bench with the clips. What we wanna do next is remove this tank, the fan and the fan shroud, you know, a few clamps and bits and pieces like that. So to do that, we need to drop the coolant first. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, you, you can do that. There's a drain plug on the bottom of the radiator. I've shown you in other videos. On, one, on the 120, it's on one side. On the 150, it's on the other. It's a white plug. We're gonna go and remove that white plug, drain the coolant, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so on a 150 Prado, drain plug over here at the driver's side. While that's draining, most of it's drained out. Set the ratchet in undo, not do up. We're gonna remove this tank pretty straightforward. All right, and I'm gonna look as uncurl as I can because I've got the long extension on, wrong tools, provided by the nurse. I'll go and get the right one. You know the old thing, if you want it done properly, you've got to do it yourself. Anyway, 
You can try and use the wrong tools, won't be a big deal. All right, it's gonna crack those loose. One, two. See what I'm doing, I'm gonna just taking it three ten little bolts, right? Okay, I'm gonna put it up on the up at the bottom of the windscreen because we're not taking that plastic trim off for this job. Therefore, but I'll sit it right up on top near the vent, not near the bottom. Because uh, yeah, I don't trust it, you know what I mean? Uh, up on top, it's not gonna fall in the vent. Be bigger than that. So one, two. The yeah, easiest way to get this out of the way, it's good if you haven't got a dual battery, makes it a bit easier. Or could I say a lot easier? I'm going to go grab a pair of pliers and get here. I'm going to take off over this end, over this end of things. There's a clamp there, we're just going to remove and just move it back a little bit, right? And then you should be able to just gently, whatever you do, don't lean on that, guys. I've said it before in other videos, don't lean on that, right? So that tank, it's almost ready to fall off now. Back over this side, you. Yeah. Okay. Take the clamp off the, the hose underneath the tank. Slip it down a little bit. Done, I'll go put the pipes down. I don't like leaving tools on cars. Grab the hose with one hand and the tank with the other. Little twist and a pull. And that will be aware, guys, that I do make things look easy sometimes. Sometimes I try and make it look hard on purpose. I know I overdo it a bit sometimes, but sometimes I'm unco on purpose because uh, the tripod's in the way, but that's that tank off, simple as that. Okay. Now what we want to do is open up the clip. There's a clip, this hose that comes down here. There's a clip where it clips into the fan trail. So we're going to use a large flat screwdriver and if you shine your light down, depending on who you are, how much light you need, and you just open up that clamp like that, it's already done. Like I said, I've done a few. And uh, now that that's off, we're able to get the fan trout out, so. Allergy city. All right, we'll just come back a little bit. Got two bolts in the fan tray. We're going to loosen those, remove those now. One's actually we won't do that yet. Okay. Wrong steps first. Wrong steps. I'm going to take this hose off out of the way, right? So you can use any specialized tools you like. Get a pair of pliers like that. We'll do the job. Just move the clamp back like so. Same over this side. I got myself into a predicament here. Anyway, you get that sometimes. That's what I mean. Gotta make it look a bit harder and use. You might just have a pair of pliers at home, so that's what we're gonna use. Gonna grab our little heater hose tool, because most likely. Oh no, that's going to come off, so we don't need that. What about that end? We'll get this end off first, gently, and then give this a bit of a, a bit of a twist. No, it's not going to come off, so we'll get out the heater hose tool. And gently place this in there. We don't want to rip the hose up. Right, and it's not the idea to pull in and pull the hose off. The idea is to gently get in there and work it up and down, side to side, and it slowly goes deeper as, you know, as it opens up. That'll crack the seal. Then you should be able to do a bit of a wiggle and it'll come off just like that. Then it'll be easy to Get the fan shroud out and also easier to access this tin mill here. So, take that bolt out. Little tin mill, about six inches down from the top of the radiator. Don't drop it. Set it up on top of the sill here. The bottom of the windscreen again. Another tin mill bolt here. So if you watch that video we did recently, 
What was it called? Um, might even be called Bleeding the Cooling System, BFE or Timing Belt. It's got a number of names there trying to help you find it, trying to make it easy for you. That bolt from the fan shroud, we'll put that in there. So the fan shroud's ready to come out, it's just clipped at the bottom, but you need to undo the fan first, so. The reason we undo the fan now, a couple of reasons. It's easier to get to the dry belt once the fan's out of the way, and it's easier to undo the fan bolts with a spanner while you've still got a resistance of the drive belt. Right, so I'll come around another direction so you can see. It's just one of those things. I can't get the camera in there while I get my hands in there to do the job. So yeah, it's just, it's one of those jobs where I need an assistant so that perhaps, I don't know, they can do it. Hey look, I'll ask, uh, sorry, wrong side. Oh, I think I picked up the wrong spanner actually. Let's see, hang on. Oh, you know, that's right. 14 mil. That's so what we want to do is turn it, you know, to where we want to crack the nut, and then one by one, this one is going to not play. Okay, this is not what normally happens. <laughs> right? But, so what we get to do, right, we need to crack them once the, once it comes in, that's alright, it's still going to happen, I was just trying to, this one might have been off before, so, that one's come undone now, right, so basically when you, I've said it before, when you hold the spanner directly out from the centre, like the hands of the clock, if you know what I mean, it's probably just going to spin the pulley, but, if you are to bring the hand in, <laughs> I don't know how I explain this to you, right? So at the moment I'm like the hand of the clock, right? I'm, I'm, way, I'm directly out from the center. It's gonna use the leverage and spin the pulley. Usually, not always, depends how tight they are. See, that one just cracked loose with that me. But I was gonna reposition the spanner so that I'm more pulling away from the center rather than trying to turn it. So, but without even doing that, this one came loose. That's why I said sometimes it just varies a little bit how tight they are. And this is what I'm saying, sometimes the words is more important than the demonstration itself. That's why you've got to watch lots of videos, sometimes you get a demo, sometimes you get a bit of talk, sometimes you get both. I hope you like this one so far. Please give all my videos the thumbs up, even before you start watching it. That'll help the channel, and then I can put more time into videos, make them better, more information for you, right? See, this one doesn't want to come. So we go in. Right, and then, see? see how easy it was? It didn't even spin once you bring your spanner in. So you're pulling out from centre, if you know what I mean. I hope you know what I mean. And then you got to, the key is to get it off without dropping it. And it'd be quite fiddly. I'm better with my left hand, but this one, it's in an awkward position. And I'm not turning it because I don't mind a challenge of seeing if I can get that nut off and not drop it. I'm using my index and second finger in quite awkwardly, it's off, I've got it like tweezers, All right there it is, only just made it out, All right, last nut to go, again see a bit of a, a bit of a bit of a kick on the spanner and it came undone without too much further to do, so that's the last one, it can be a bit harder, depends if the fan cracks loose from the hub if you know what I mean, because at the moment remember the drive belt's still on. Right, so at the moment the fan is still in hard on the water pump, all the nuts are off, I've put the tools down, nothing's holding it now. It's just waiting for me, literally, to go, feel that, now the fan's off, and it'll all just lift out together. Now once I get it to there, I'm going to take the fan itself out, there it is, I'll go and place that somewhere. No point making your job harder than it is trying to lift out two together. Now you can concentrate on gently removing this without breaking anything. Look, there's your fan shroud. And that's literally how long it would take you if every 50,000 kilometres you wanted to do that maintenance on the 150 where we've shown you clearing the radio. I'm not going to do it with the camera this time. But we've shown you previously, right, 
how we use the pressure washer. Not too close, that damage the fins, but it about depends what pressure washer. I'm not gonna tell you how far. Every pressure washer and nozzle and everything's different, but for us, about this far away, and it pushes and you can see the water coming out this side, and you can see before, all the bugs, dirt and dust. This one, not too bad, not as bad as the last one. They all vary, so it's not always worth it, depending on your driving style. Definitely worth it on every car at 150,000 Ks. And not many people do that. This is what I say, you get what you pay for. Not many people take the time to even bother with this, right? Who's giving you this information anyway? Who takes the time to do that? All right, next thing is we need a, the same 14 mil spanner, right? And we can place it on the tensioner there, right? Now, I'm doing this different to what I normally do, okay? Normally I use a half inch breaker bar and a 14 mil socket. Then I can just angle the bar out a bit so it doesn't hit the pulley, but I'm gonna pretend I haven't got one of those. I'm on the side of the road and I've just got a spanner. I'm gonna make it look hard, all right? Because I love doing that every now and then because so far you're going, oh, this is easy, I can do that, whatever, all right? And it just might not be the case. So we need to get this in the right position so that A, it doesn't hit the compressor Turn it around the other way, someone says. No, no, that was the best way. Right, and it doesn't quite get in where I want it to go. Here we go, that'll be the one. Oh no, that's wrong way, Anthony. I'm going clockwise, that's gonna undo the bolt. We wanna do that, but not yet. See, how you, you know, even, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to uh, do stuff up like that. So we're just gonna push on that spanner, unhook the drive belt off the alternator, and then gently release it again. Right, spanner, put it down, of course. Always put the tools on the bench. Right, then you can just carefully unhook your drive belt off everything. And I'll give you a little tip if you haven't got a belt guide or something like that on these cars. I'll take the water pump pulley out of the way. Right, let you go on the bench. I'll give you a little tip. This drive belt, the old drive belt, 150,000 Ks. Like I said, they're not bad deterioration wise. They just get dry, noisy, and stretch out of their normal range. So they need to be replaced. Or should I say should be replaced? They don't need to be. You could probably leave it there a long time. And if you like trying your luck, yeah, I'm sure it'll be all right. Okay, so look, <clears throat> guys, I haven't got a lot of time today. So unfortunately, I probably won't be able to continue this video. But the good news is we've got plenty more like it. That continue on. I suppose we'll call this one stripping the vehicle to do your 50,000 K maintenance. If you do a lot of bugs, dust and dirt and you want to keep your cooling system working and this is another good one. It's got the same stock standard, you know, not factory stock standard, but factory alloy bull bar that leaves all the airflow arrangements at the front alone. You know, it's got all those plastic ducts I've shown you in the other videos, which is really good. It's got that, you know, kind of like uh, the factory alloy bar and the plastics here, you know, they funnel the air to the radiator. We want that to be clear so it can flow and cool because when it's under its highest extreme temperatures, you know, 30, 40 plus degree temperatures and it's working, that's when it's at higher temperatures. Take my word for it. Normal operating temperature is up to 90 degrees coolant, okay? So if you're seeing 91, 2, 3, 4, it's way too hot. You're asking for trouble. You don't need an EGT gauge. You watch your coolant temperature, guys. Um, normal idle is 83, maybe 84, 85. Normal driving operating range, 86, 87, 88. 89 is all right, getting up there. 90 is the limit of the normal operating range. It doesn't mean you can't go to 91, 2, 3, 4, 5 and it'll be fine. I've done that heaps of times, whatever. I'm not saying I've done that. People say that. I've done that, no problem. 98, 110, whatever. You can do whatever you want. There's a lot of luck involved. And how many times are you gonna do it? That all adds to stress of the engine. Me, I wanna keep it in peak condition and I wanna make sure that it is cooling and I don't keep my, I've never seen my engines go over 90 degrees. I, don't, I can't remember if I, if it was a 91 or 92, that's when I'm backing right off. That's when your EGTs are also up. This isn't a talk on EGTs. This is showing you how easy it is to strip it down to that point. These aren't brittle and nearly break when they get old or anything like it, okay? But if you bang a battery on it, if you lean on it, if you slip, bang, you will snap that off, okay? They've, they've upgraded them in some later radiators. You can do a repair if you're lucky, but luckily a radiator, brand new genuine, it's only about 500 bucks. So worst case scenario, that's the way I would go. If you happen to break it, I'll be putting a new one in. 
They don't need a new radiator, they're nice and clean on the inside, it's the outside bugs and dirt that we can't control. Some people are talking about putting fly screens in front of the grill and that. You can do that if you like, that probably would be helpful, but all the fine dirt still gets through. Just remember, if the air's flowing, the dirt's flowing too. The dirt is something that fills up in there, and only takes a little bit of fluff, so it would be helpful, but it can be quite untidy as well. I think you don't need that unless you're traveling. If you're out in areas where you get those locusts and that, they can block things up pretty quick. That's where you want to have your mesh out in front that you can regularly clean. You just put it quite untidily on front of the bull bar and re so you can see it and you can regularly clean it. That's what you're going to need to do, you know. Hit it with a pressure washer, you know, downwards and blast it all off. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I'd love to be able to do more, but I've done it before. I'll tell you what we're going to do next, right? We're going to take the three pulleys off, the three 14 mils. We've got bearings to replace of those. We're going to take the water pump off, okay? We're going to take the bottom hose off, this one that's hanging around here somewhere. Where is it? Here it is. We're going to take that off to drain the rest of the coolant out. We're going to replace the water pump. We're going to put that on. Before we put the new bearings on, then we're going to take the uh, timing belt off. Those components, we're going to wash that down, blow it dry. We're going to put all new components, all clean cover, nice and clean. Put it back on, seal that up. Now that that's sealed up and the new water pump's on, then we're going to do the reverse flush clean the exterior core and everything around here. Big clean up. We're going to blow that dry, then we've got the new water pump on, we've got that on. Then we're going to place our new um, bearings in the pulleys and put the pulleys back on. And we're pretty well where we were and it's going to go back together opposite of what we put it together. Beware, sometimes I can make things look easy, sometimes I can make things look hard. Um, just because you're seeing a little bit of video doesn't mean you're an expert and you can do everything. I suggest you watch more videos and you watch them till the end, get the maximum detail. We've got a number of different videos that all include mixed information. You can pick up lots of tips in any video. Read the comments. People say it's the best channel. You can't get this anywhere. So thank you if that's what you think. And if you don't, well, you can go and watch whatever you want, something else. If you got something like that, please remember to give us the thumbs up on all the videos and put a comment if you've got any questions. I do read the comments. Um, even some of the negative ones I leave there, that's okay. Better if you don't. Let's stick to positive. If you've got something negative, shoot it through in a text message, but leave the swear words out and don't get personal about it. I'm open to feedback, just careful how you do it. I'm not interested in time wasters that want to carry on like pork chops. Uh, also, if you haven't already, please subscribe, turn the bell on. Bada bing, bada boom, I'm out here. Hopefully that helps guys, see ya.